Hi, I'm Allie, a test prep tutor and strategist at TestGeek. 50% of your score on the SAT comes from math, but only 25% of your score on the ACT comes from math. But what other differences are there between the ACT math and the SAT math? Let's take a look. Whether you absolutely dread math or it's in your comfort zone, it's important to understand what the difference is between the SAT math and the ACT math. While they're both math sections, they are quite different. And learning about these two sections can help you decide which test you might be better suited for. The first and probably most obvious difference between the SAT math and ACT math is that the ACT math is one of the four sections on this test, accounting for 25% of your overall score. Whereas on the SAT, you actually have two math sections, which counts overall for 50% of your SAT score. If you know right out the gate that you're going to be particularly strong at math or particularly weak, this can actually help you decide between these two tests. If you know you're gonna score really well on math overall, you're just a really strong math student, then perhaps you should consider leaning towards the SAT where that extremely um, strong math score will help you in your overall SAT score. Whereas if you're really weak on math and you don't have a lot of confidence that you can improve your math abilities, then you may want to lean towards the ACT, where this math section only counts for 25% of your score. The next difference between these two sections is timing. On the ACT math, you have 60 minutes to answer 60 questions, which is one minute per question. While on the SAT, you have a 55 minute calculator optional section, meaning you can use a calculator if you'd like, and this section has 38 questions, and that gives you almost 90 seconds per question. On the second math section, the one that is no calculator, you have 25 minutes to answer 20 questions, which is 75 seconds per question. This timing difference might not seem like a big deal, but it's actually quite significant. The difference between 60 seconds per question and 90 or even 70 seconds per question is pretty big when we're talking about this many questions on a test. The ACT is known overall to force more of a time constraint on students. And this time constraint makes the questions more difficult. If you have, let's say, like a medium difficulty question and you only have 30 seconds to answer it as opposed to 60 seconds, that's gonna make that medium difficulty question seem actually quite difficult. Um, and so that's how the ACT can sometimes make things just more challenging overall. Um, whereas the SAT tends to rely on more challenging questions. It may not be more challenging concepts, but the way that the question is worded or structured may be more challenging compared to the ACT. That's not true on every single question, but overall when we look at these two sections, that is the case in, in, you know, on most questions. So that's something to consider. Um, if you find yourself really struggling with time in general, then you know, maybe the ACT might not be the best choice for you. Whereas if you feel a little bit more confident in your ability to tackle hard questions, um, then maybe the SAT may be um, better suited for you. So just something to consider. Now that we've gone over a couple of the basic differences between these two sections, let's dig into the math concepts that are tested on the ACT math and the SAT math. The ACT math section can be broken down into two main categories of questions. The first is called preparing for higher math. And this section includes five subcategories of topics that can be tested on the ACT math. So let's take a look at these. The first is numbers and quantities. So this is things like numerical quantities, integers, rational exponents, vectors, and matrices. So this is like dealing with the basics of numbers and counting and quantities of numbers and that sort of thing. You need to be able to demonstrate your ability to understand numbers and quantities. And I know that's a little bit vague, but this is really basic math um, concepts. So working with integers and being able to manipulate values, that sort of thing. The second subcategory is algebra. And you're probably pretty familiar with algebra if you've been in algebra one, maybe you're in algebra two this year. Um, but this section is talking about things like equations, graphs, and models. Um, and you need to be able to solve algebraic expressions and equations um, that could be linear expressions, polynomials, radical relationships, or other systems of equations. So this covers a lot in this category, but pretty much all the basics that you've learned in Algebra 1 are going to apply into this section. The third subcategory is functions. And this is things like 
um, function notation, representation, and application of functions. So similar to algebra, but instead of expressions, we're talking about functions. So this is things like f of x. So you really need to be comfortable using functions that are expressed in that way, plugging in values into your functions, manipulating functions, um, that kind of thing. You also need to be familiar with um, how functions can be displayed in graph form. The next subcategory is geometry. Another one that might seem pretty obvious, you've probably had a whole year of geometry class, um, but inside of geometry, it's going to deal with shapes and solids. Um, so this could be 2D and three-dimensional shapes. So it could include questions on congruence um, or simil similarity relationships concerning anything from surface area to volume measurements. Um, so what really that means is that you need to be able to understand the relationship between, let's say, perimeter and area um, or volume measurements and how to kind of manipulate uh, different shapes uh, depending on their area, perimeter, or volume. Um, so as long as you feel really comfortable working with perimeter area and volume um, formulas, uh, you should be good for this, for this area. The last subcategory in this first section is statistics and probability. And this is a tricky one because a lot of students do not get statistics classes in school. And if you have, that's great. You probably will be totally fine. Um, but for many students, this is an area that you probably want to brush up on and just understand um, some of the basics of. So for this section, it's about a couple things. Describing and analyzing data collection methods is the first thing. Um, and that sounds a little bit vague, uh, but basically what they're trying to test on is um, collecting data. So let's talk about like surveys and things like that. So they want to make sure you understand um, basic data collection methods um, and data analysis. And then the second is... Um, apply and model data and data distributions, um, as well as like probability calculations. So anything that you might use if you were dealing with statistics in like your day job, if you had to deal with probability, if you were having to analyze data, if you were having to um, look at samples and surveys and that kind of thing. Um, so this is a section that I definitely recommend looking at practice questions for. It's not super difficult, but it may not be super obvious unless you have looked at some practice questions from the ACT. The second section of math concepts on the ACT math is called integrating essential skills. This sounds super vague, um, but basically what the ACT is saying with integrating essential skills is they want to be able to see your ability to problem solve. Um, so this is where they throw in like complex problems, problems that involve multiple steps, so instead of just testing basics um, or basic concepts that we covered in the last, the first section um, previously, they want to understand your ability to deal with multiple concepts together or complex concepts, concepts that require you to uh, deal with multiple skill sets, things like that. Um, in other words, showing your work. Um, so if you've ever had a math teacher like ask you to show your work and kind of problem solve, um, something out on paper, that's what the ACT is trying to test here. You're not actually going to be able to show your work on the test, um, but think about this section as just an application of all of the concepts and skills that are tested uh, that we went over in the first section. Now, I said that there were only two sections. There's actually a bonus third section, which is called modeling. Um, again, this one's not really a there's not really concepts underneath it. It's more just your ability to use all of the concepts that we talked about in the first section um, in a modeling application. Um, and so you need to be able to manipulate, interpret, and evaluate different models. Um, and again, this is an area where you really just need to do some practice questions. You'll start to see this stuff show up in real ACT practice questions. The more you do of those, um, the better off you're gonna be. Now let's jump over to the SAT math. Now the SAT math breaks down into four main sections. So the first is the heart of algebra. Um, and this is where you get all of those basic algebra skills. So everything that you've learned in algebra one, even pre-algebra, um, and a little bit into algebra two perhaps, is gonna be in the heart of algebra. This is what I call um, some of the most basic skills that are tested on the SAT. So this could be everything from linear equations to functions. Um, you need to create, a, you need to be able to create equations, solve systems of equations, um, and form representations of linear relationships. So basically everything that you've learned in algebra one is fair game with a little bit from pre-algebra and maybe a little bit from algebra two. The second section on the SAT math is called problem solving and data analysis. 
And this section covers things like percentages, ratios, proportions, dealing with proportions, ratios, and percentages, as in manipulating um, percentages and things, using ratios in more complicated problems, um, and using proportional reasoning. So it's not just uh, the basics of these skills, it's really applying them to more complicated problems um, or word problems, um, that kind of thing that you may have seen in school. So these can get a little bit tricky for sure, and it's important to do some practice of these types of questions. Um, these problems usually involve multiple steps. You may be asked to measure and evaluate data models um, or even solve problems um, that require you to use many of these skills in one problem. The third section is called Passport to Advanced Math. And this is definitely some of the more advanced topics, so things that you may have learned in Algebra 2 um, and, and other things like that, just in a little bit of higher math. Um, and so really what they're trying to get at here is skills that you would need if you were going into a STEM field. Um, and I know that that's vague, but that's just kind of the reasoning behind these concepts. So you need to be familiar with complex equations and functions such as quadratic discriminant problems, um, exponential functions. Um, you need to be able to create and understand simple rational expressions. So it's a pretty broad area and there's a lot of specifics underneath here that you can definitely practice on your own time. Um, but one thing to note here is just that this is a just more advanced version of that first section we talked about, Heart of Algebra. So a lot more difficult problems, problems that require some more advanced skills. The last section is called Additional Topics in Math. Uh, now this is where they just throw everything else that didn't fit into the previous three categories. Um, and there's not a ton of questions um, in this section. Usually about 10% of the questions fall into um, additional topics. Uh, but it's something that if you have the time to study, if you already feel really good about the other three sections of topics, you do wanna focus some time here and make sure that you um, have built up your skill sets. Um, so. A few things that could be on here are more advanced geometry questions, trigonometry, complex numbers, you know, working with I, imaginary numbers, those sorts of things. Um, this is also where you might be asked to apply different theorems, um, deal with arc length, um, trigonomic r ratios, uh, measurements of angles, those sorts of things. Stuff that you probably learned or are going to learn in school, um, but you probably didn't spend a ton of time on. And they're, you know, they're gonna test these things um, some of these concepts on your test. And it's important that you do familiarize yourself with these um, if you're looking to get a really top score. Okay, so that really covers all of the SAT. And I hope that you're starting to see that there are some key differences in the ACT math and SAT math. Um, overall, you know, these two tests are really trying to capture your understanding and problem solving skills um, in the area of math, um, really from geometry, algebra one, algebra two primarily really nothing too much above that. Um, but there are some differences and what you'll really get a feel for when you start doing some practice questions on the ACT or SAT math problems is the style of questions, how these concepts are tested. And that honestly makes the biggest difference. Um, if your brain is really focused on maybe how you've learned something in school, you really struggle to apply concepts to more complicated problems, um, then perhaps the ACT may be a better fit for you. You're gonna have that time constraint issue, but Traditionally, the ACT math section tests their concepts in a more straightforward way. Whereas on the SAT, I would say it's applications of these same concepts, but um, in ways that you may not have seen in school before. Um, so you really have to feel really confident about your core skills, but also primarily your math reasoning skills. And that takes a long time to work on. Um, and you know, it's important to understand where your skill set lies. Um, so think through that, think through where your strengths are. Um, I hope this video has been helpful for you to understand the differences between the ACT math and the SAT math sections. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave those in the comments and we'll get right back to you. Thanks for joining us for this video. If you're looking for more content like this, make sure you subscribe. You can also find us at testgeek.com forward slash blog.